hello viewers i welcome you all to the dmg chemistry classes and in today's video i am going to explain the concept of oxochromes and in my previous video i discussed the concept of chromophore and i told you that any functional group which absorbs electromagnetic radiations in uv visual region uh, irrespective of the fact that whether it imparts color to the compound or not is called as a chromophore and i also told you that majority of the chromophores absorbs below 220 nanometers a region which cannot be easily studied with the help of commercially available spectrophotometers or ordinary spectrophotometer okay but fortunately we can increase the lambda maximum as well as the molar extinction coefficient of a chromophore by attaching certain groups by replacing the hydrogen atoms of the uh, chromophore and those groups are called as oxochromes and now i will define uh, the term oxochrome but before defining it if you are new on my channel then please subscribe and also press the bell icon for the further notifications and please don't forget to like and share my videos so now let us define the term oxochrome so friends the oxochromes are the groups which do not show any characteristic absorption above 200 nanometers what when attached to a given uh, chromophore cause a shift uh, in the absorption band towards the longer wavelength with the simultaneous increase in the intensity of the absorption band okay so oxochromes wo groups honge jo khud 200 nanometer se upar uv visual radiations ko absorb nahi karenge लेकिन जब हम उनको किसी बेसिक क्रोमोफोर के साथ अटैच करेंगे तो वो क्रोमोफोर का जो एब्जॉर्प्शन पीक है एब्जॉर्प्शन बैंड है उसको एक लॉन्गर वेवलेंथ की तरफ शिफ्ट कर देंगे मतलब वो लेमडा मैक्सिमम को इंक्रीज कर देंगे और वो एब्जॉर्प्शन बैंड की जो इंटेंसिटी है उसको भी इंक्रीज कर देंगे मतलब कि वो मोलर एक्सटिंगशन कॉफिशेंट को भी बढ़ा देंगे तो ऐसे ग्रुप्स ऑक्सोक्रोम्स होते हैं and here i have written some examples of uh, oxochromes the first one is your hydroxy group oh then amino group nh2 then sulfhydryl group sh and their derivative also uh, that is alkoxy group and this group is derived from the hydroxy group by replacing its hydrogen with alkyl group and both these groups are derived from the amino group here we have replaced one hydrogen with alkyl group and here both these two, uh, two hydrogens are replaced uh, uh, with alkyl groups and obviously this group is the derivative of sulfhydryl group so all these are oxochromes and uh, here i have also written some more examples to illustrate the effect of your oxochromes so here i have written uh, uh, trans azobenzene and uh, Uh, the lambda maximum for the trans azobenzene is 320 nanometers and the molar extinction coefficient is 21000 and when i have replaced the hydrogen atom here which is present at the para position by this ethoxy group okay c2h5o then the compound becomes uh, para ethoxy trans azobenzene and you can see here that now the lambda maximum has increased from 320 nanometers to 385 nanometers and the molar extinction coefficient has also increased from 21000 to 42000 so here this ethoxy group is acting as a oxochrome because it is causing a shift in the absorption band towards longer wavelength with simultaneous increase in the intensity means increase in the value of molar extinction coefficient and in this example uh, we have benzene and the lambda maximum for the benzene is 254 nanometers and molar extinction coefficient is 169 and when i replaced this hydrogen atom of benzene with amino group then it becomes aniline and you can see that the lambda maximum has increased from 254 nanometers to 280 nanometers and molar extinction coefficient has also increased from 169 to 1430 okay so here this amino group is acting as a oxochrome and now i will discuss the mechanism of action that how do these oxochrome work and how do they increase the value of lambda maximum and molar extinction coefficient so let us discuss the mechanism of action
mechanism of action so friends it is the characteristic uh, property of almost or all oxochromes that they have non bonding electrons present on the heteroatoms okay well, here we have examples you can clearly see that uh, uh, on this oxygen atom we have non bonding electrons or the uh, lone pair of electrons likewise here uh, nitrogen is also having non bonding electrons and sulfur is also having and these non bonding electrons present on the oxochromes they enter into the uh, into the conjugation with the chromophore and they extend the conjugation of the chromophore okay let us explain it with example so here i have a basic chromophore this is ethylenic or ethylene and here i replace one of its hydrogen with an oxochrome and I, as i said that oxochrome it will have non bonding electrons and these non bonding electron will extend conjugation they will enter into the conjugation with the chromophore like this and after this uh, conjugation carbon atom will acquire negative charge this bond will become single this bond will acquire double bond character and the positive charge will be present on the oxochrome okay so in this way the non bonding electrons they enter into conjugation with chromophore and extends the conjugation here we can also see that uh, the non bonding electrons present on the uh, oxygen atom of the ethoxy group they will also extend the conjugation in this way that is these two electron will move uh, into the basic chromophore like this and the pi electrons will move like this okay in this way so you can clearly see that this oxochrome is extending uh, extending conjugation by supplying its non bonding electrons towards the basic chromophore okay and in case of aniline also the uh, lone pair of electron present on nitrogen atom will extend the conjugation let us draw some structures so here we have aniline okay and the non bonding electrons will enter into the conjugation with the benzene ring double bond will be here positive charge on nitrogen atom this carbon atom will acquire negative charge and further structures can also be drawn like this here the bond will be formed between this carbon and this carbon and the pi electrons will move towards the next carbon atom which will acquire negative charge here nitrogen atom will have positive charge a bond will be formed here and here we will have negative charge okay and in the next structure these two electrons will form bond here and pi electrons will move towards the next carbon atom okay here we will have negative charge double bond and positive charge present on the nitrogen atom okay so these are the various contributing structures and these structures are showing that the non bonding electrons or unshared pair of electron present on the nitrogen atom is entering into the conjugation with the ring and extending conjugation okay so friends this extended conjugation is basically responsible for the increase in the value of lambda maximum and increase in the value of molar extinction coefficient because this extended conjugation it decreases the energy gap between the ground state and the excited state and i have explained you uh, in my earlier videos that whenever this uh, energy difference between the ground state and the excited state decreases it shifts the uh, absorption maximum towards the longer side that is it increases the lambda maximum and it also increases the molar extinction coefficient and i will discuss this effect of conjugation in detail and i will explain each and every aspect of it in my next video so please keep watching my videos like and share and subscribe my channel thank you very much